الصورة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Welcome you back after uh, disappearing for a while but anyway I wish that you have a nice time and you have an easy life easier life than it was before I wish you every success in your life and in the life to come inshallah I received a lot of questions from one of my friends called Ahmad Sheikh from Idlib a girl frustration frustrated frustrating questions from the youth that's why I called the meeting today or the talk today about questions from the young people or the youth Ahmad Sheikh as we know that he is one of the people who live in Idlib inside Syria under all this pressure in the country but he is still uh, raising a lot of questions which let us to realize that the, the youth should have a critical role in our society. I will go through these questions one by one quickly to try to respond to some of them. First one, he said, we talk too much about youth, capacity building, awareness raising of society, and we organize lengthy training workshops to achieve what? To achieve that. What are the outcome of this and their impact on the society? And how can we practically apply this to empower our youth? To be very honest, for this question, I have my views. My view is that most of our money not only spent on training or workshops or measuring the impact. Most of our money is spent on the traditional work. If we are doing humanitarian work, food, nutrition, water, sanitation, health, so on, so on, so on, so on. We do not invest at all in research, very minimum. We do not invest at all in advocacy, very minimum. We do not invest at all in capacity building program and workshops, very minimum, compared with how much we spend on the traditional work. That we are very happy to do it. Traditional work will never make a change. Will never make a difference. The only thing will make a difference is advocacy, training, capacity building, research, as well as <coughs> connection and networking. Sometimes you cannot measure what you are doing because the process of measurements of the impact has to be a process. Not only one workshop, not only one training program, it's a series as a process of series of training of capacity building program. And capacity building is not only by workshops. It is by your experience from <laughs> working with the people, from learning from your colleague or from your seniors, or learning from the uh, people who are actually have experience before. So to be very honest, this one, Yes, we do a lot, but haphazardly. We have to review what we are doing. Second question, how can we utilize youth capacities, capabilities, and realize their role in the society? You want to utilize their capacity? You have to believe in them. As a very strong effective, powerful component of the structured society you are living in. If you want to utilize me, empower me. If you want to, 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 to let me to become very productive, give me my role. Believe in me. Listen to me. Don't sideline me. This is the answer to the second question. The third question, how can we, uh, the third question, how can we elevate social awareness to become the protector and make it uh, the protector of effective community values? Social awareness started from the time you choose your wife and the time you choose your husband. 
You choose the best which Allah likes. Whether female, when the husband is choosing his wife, or as a male, when the wife choosing her husband. It is a family. The first cornerstone of community awareness. Educated mother, very well aware mother, very loyal mother, not only loyal to you, but to the society, to the culture, to the values, to the religion. This is where we start. Actually, uh, uh, once we build this between me and my wife at home, I'll be able to build it in the second generation and the third generation and the fourth generation. It is a process, long-term intergenerational process of passing the knowledge, passing the experience of this educational enhancement to the mind of the young people. So we can protect our values. Number four, how can we make people love learning? The process of education, love education, love seeking knowledge, to fight despair and be aware of the challenges of surrounding. Yes, we are living in a very difficult time now. A lot of challenges, internally, externally, and whatever you call it. I'll go back to the process of building the awareness. It is the, the family is number one, the school is number two, the mosque, the synagogue, the church is number three, the temple is number three, the media is number four, okay? The neighborhood is number five or number six, okay? The relatives is number seven, okay? The culture, the news, Everything, these protective measures, okay, these protective measures start from getting married to actually we have our children, our second generation and third generation. If my mother spend her time, invest her time in me to love knowledge seeking, and to love and excel in education, I will do it. Start from there. Then it goes on and on and on and on. Regardless of the kind of society that we are living in. I don't want to take the surrounding society as, a, as, as, a, as, as the only challenge and the obstacle. There's a more difficult challenge in myself, which is my heart. How can I control my heart? I control myself. The fifth question, is despair amongst youth is the beginning of hope? Of course, despair is the beginning of hope. Yes. The Wahab Wahab say in the Quran, when the prophets started to lose the, the, their hope in victory, after they exhausted the resources to get the victory, Allah showered and blessed them with the victory to come. So, Keep exhausting yourself, but don't lose hope to create hope. If you lost hope at the time of despair, you will never see the end of the tunnel again. How can we implement, implant, sorry, how can we implant determination and will in the heart of youth and keep them away, far away from complacency and failure. That's number six. You know how? In the hearts of, listen to them. Listen to the youth. Mix with them. Encourage them to take initiative and empower them to make a decision and put them in the consultation process and put them in the executive process role in the society that you are running. This, by doing this, you will find the young man becomes stronger, the young woman becomes stronger and have the will to change. Not only that, it's very important what I have said, but at the same time, teach them the great achievement of the reformers in the past, prophets, messengers, and other people. To let them to understand 
with no resources and left the resource and, le and, and less resources, they managed to achieve what we failed to achieve when we are having all these resources with us. That's why the determination will be building up and they will have this will to change. I will make a change. This will happen to them. What's the practical change making process which will help us not to live in our dreams but to take us from our dreams? Practical process is field work. This field work could be in your area, in your street, in your village, in your city, in your districts, in your country, or be somewhere else. Mix work, apply. Mix work, apply. When we have this, this is the process. This is the process will enable us actually to make the change and stop talking about our dreams. Stop, talk, stop talking about, stop, stop becoming nostalgic. How can we, how can we keep young people motivated? That is question number eight. How can we keep young people motivated? By having a good role models amongst them. Unfortunately, with the Arab Spring, uh, seven, eight years ago, most of those role models were fake, or most of them, not all of them, fake role models. That's why the youth or the young people nowadays, or at the time, actually lost confidence. Lost confidence. And lost hope. And went to the state of despair. Some of them even committed suicide. So what, what, is, what, is, what is the role model? The role model is somebody in you, yourself. When you and me take our personal responsibility to work on ourselves to become role models. Then the real role models in the community is that somebody has a history. Somebody has contributed to humanity, contributed to society, contributed to the development of our country. And as I mentioned before, in some of the social workers, like uh, if we look at uh, uh, Abdul Sattar Eidi from, uh, from Pakistan, if we look at Muhammad Yunus from Bangladesh, if we look at somebody from Egypt called uh, Salah Atiyah as well, uh, if we call uh, like Mother, Mother Teresa, if we call that like, Nelson Mandela, if we call uh, like Malcolm X, if we call like actually Martin Luther King, if we call like Ali Aiza Begovic, all those and others are role models. We saw them and we lived through their life. Muhammad Ali, the boxer, as another, another role model. Even some people look at Cristiano Ronaldo as a role model because they've got some moral values and so on. Those people lived through their life and achieved a lot and passed these challenges. Plus, what in me to become a role model myself? I have to work on myself as well. Number nine, how can we achieve more positive morality based values results in our society while facing these challenges? Despair, oppression, living in a less or no civil liberty space society. Tangible results. How? Start with smaller projects which could mot motivate you. Do not conflict with these autocratic authorities. Do not confront them. Do not conflict with them. Do not show them all your capability because they might crash your organization. If politically they are marketing some of you or some of the organizations you are attached to with red label, please detach yourself from those people at the moment. Because unfortunately, these autocratic uh, regimes are making the decision not only to live, not to crush you as an individual, but to crush you as organization. But results, small, Productive, simple, effective, tangible, 
present, uh, uh, projects. Number 10, how can we achieve comprehensive individual and societal reform? And what is the process of maintaining it? Reform is individual responsibility. That's why our prophet and all the prophets have this time to connect with God. When nobody can see them, when they, they ask him and they worship him to cleanse their or to clean their hearts and their bodies so they'll be able to serve the community. So reform of society first start at home. You and your wife, you and your children, we and we are family. Then we can go from there with the struggle and, and the, the challenge we are facing inside our hearts to the challenge we are facing in the hearts of other people. The form process starts at home with you. When you look at all the great names which I mentioned earlier, now they people be put in jail, in detention camps, in concentration camps, tortured, called names, and so on, so on, so on, so on. But they managed to keep their soul and their spirit and their heart clean. So once we work on ourselves, we'll be able to sit down together to build society organization, to build community organization, to build civil servant organization, and to change the society through the work of our organization. Question number 11, does social change always come after hardship and this disaster? Yes and no. Majority, yes. But if we build a very well established and structure and safe society, we'll be able to make such a change because we'll have more time, more space. The change you can make in the state of despair and the autocratic regimes is to come out from the darkness of corruption into the beginning of building our society. Once you're starting to build, to build a structure accommodating, conducive society, will be able to excel to build the civilization that we want. So in first, come out of the tunnel of corruption then build the society which can build the civilization and the renaissance. Number 12, how can young people establish community building projects and save their new innovative, innovative, innovative initiatives while facing these challenges? Yes, they can. Because they've been done before. If we look at the story of Especially Yusuf alayhi salam. All his brothers were jealous of him. This is number one. Because his father loved him more than them. This is number one. Number two, at the age under 10 years old, he was thrown into the deep well. This jealousy, then throwing him into the deep well, then being sold as a slave or a, as, a, as, as a servant, then being grown up, growing up in the house of the chief of Egypt at the time. Then the story of the woman of the chief, which wanted to uh, have uh, other, commit adultery with him, then being more pressure on him when he put in front of the older ladies to force him to do the same. Then when he proved innocent, the judiciary in Egypt decided to throw him into the, into the prison. Then after that, he came out. You see, all this process, all this process which he went through, this experience, made him to become Yusuf. So he managed to go through all those obstacles and to win and in 20 years' time or more, he became the chief of Egypt. 
How can we achieve comprehensive individual and social reform? That's what I said before. Uh, yes, and the answer this one. How can we achieve comprehensive individual and social reform? And what is that? Does social work uh, change always come after this? We'll answer this one. How can young people establish community building projects? Start small and grow. Start small and grow. Start small and grow. How can we create conducive, accommodating atmosphere to nurture the young people Young people, what? Uh, young people, because there's something wrong with it, my translation. Uh, okay. How can we create a conducive, accommodating atmosphere to nurture the young people, schools of thoughts, schools of thoughts and philosophy of thinking? Uh, ah, so the young people school and the philosophy of thinking. Now it's right. Initiatives, projects, dreams, aspiration while facing these challenges. Don't, 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 don't confront the state. At all, at any cost. Save your organization. Save your organization. Save your organization. Work less. You can work hard, but show less of your capacity and capability. Not to antagonize those autocratic uh, regimes. And start with the very small projects which are tangible. How can we move away from dreaming to reality, being traditional to innovation, being nostalgic to competitors? This is by two things, belief and start small. Don't, you can think big, but start small. You can think global, but you have to start local. We can call it, we can call it global thinking. Global. Globally, you think global, but you act local. And when you act local in this atmosphere, please, please, please do not confront and not conflict with the autocratic regime. How can we move away from dreaming to reality? Yes, uh, I, I mentioned this. How can we create and protect our critical mass? Unfortunately, in most of the Muslim countries, we don't have critical masses. Maybe in some of them we might have. But in the countries which has this autocratic uh, regimes, no way to have critical mass. Critical mass to make the change in, in, in geography, in water, in agriculture, in economy, in... Uh, in industry, in military, in, uh, in arts, in music, and all this. Very difficult to have the collective to sit down together in this kind of regimes. But you, have, you might have critical people. These critical people, our advice to them is one thing. Work, keep working, even if you cannot connect with the other critical individual to make the critical mass. But without having the critical mass, you will not be able to go from uh, dreams to reality. Number 16, how can we be protected from our donor culture? Donor culture, again. If we have an independent income, if we can make our decision. I remember, say, for Sheikh Sharawi said, the, the, the nation which does not produce its food will never be able to become individual, individual and independent thinker. The money comes from abroad will impose on you the culture of the donor. The culture of the donor, the culture of the donor.
So in this 25 minutes or more, how long? Okay. Uh, we managed to respond to some of those questions put by Ahmad al-Sheikh. A lot of questions to be answered. A lot of research to be conducted. A lot of investment to be given to the society to develop advocacy, to develop research, to develop capacity building, to develop connection and networking and making workshops and build all this process of change-making process. So I thank you very much for putting all these questions to me and I hope it became clearer to us after listening to my discussion. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.